everyone here today. And if you're a visitor in our midst, um, I give you a most hearty welcome. And there are ushers in the back if you need help with anything. Um, today is our Cuban sandwich fundraiser in the dining room following worship. And ushers and members will be happy to assist anyone who needs help. Um, I ask everyone to take a moment and sign and pass the blue welcome booklets. Uh, the drive time devotionals are available on the church website and adult and youth Lenten study will be held in the chapel today at 1115 and the children's class will be in room 203 following the Cuban sandwich fundraiser. The session is called today for a special meeting of the congregation at the conclusion of worship for the purpose of electing the nominating committee. And now, as we listen to the beauty of the music in this sacred space, let us silently prepare ourselves for worship. The Lord be with you. God is our refuge and our strength, a present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be changed, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea. Though the waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. And let us pray as we begin our worship today. God of grace, you have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. 
Fill us with your spirit that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin to God. God of mercy, you sent Jesus Christ to seek and save the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way. We are misled by pride, for we see ourselves guiltless when we are compromised, and innocent when we have ulterior motives. If we have failed in love, neglected justice, and ignored your truth, have mercy on us, O God, and forgive our sin. Return us to paths of righteousness through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please stand for the assurance of pardon. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. May the God of mercy, who forgives us all sins, strengthen us in oh goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Well, as if we didn't have enough already on the schedule for this service, we thought, why not learn a new song? So I thought it'd be too, this next song is a canon, which is just like a round, and I thought it would be too bad uh, to let it go and not do it in parts. So we're going to split the congregation right down the middle there, and um, I'm going to teach you the part. And we're going to sing together just like a choir. We're only using the first two lines if you're looking at the Renew book. And um, so the second line, if you're looking at the Renew book, the third and fourth line, don't worry about that. We'll add that one next time. It'll even be neater. So just the first two lines. It goes like this. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation. Try that. The Lord is my light. My light and salvation, the second line goes, in him I trust, in him I trust, let's try that, in him I trust, in him I trust, now let's try the whole thing all together, the Lord is my light, my Now, each group is going to sing it three times. We're going to start with the, the western half over there, all right? You guys all ready? All right, and then the eastern half, which is on this side, we're going to come in um, where it says B1, or that would be... Um, in Him I Trust. the second line, uh, if you're looking at the bulletin, okay? So here we go. Um, just like row, row, row your boat. Just think row, row, row your boat. So the, the, the western half, we're going to start out. And when you get to the second line, um, then you guys here on the east side are going to start at the beginning. The Lord is my light. Everybody pretty clear? All right, here we go. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation. Just one. 
one more time. The Lord is my light, my light in salvation. In Him I trust, in Him I trust. Maybe you'll be seated. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and our minds with your spirit of wonder and anticipation that as the scriptures are read and proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. Our first reading comes from the very familiar text, the first chapter of the book of Genesis. Listen for the word of God. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for season, and for days and for years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good from this short reading from the Gospel according to St. Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts. Our reading for this first Sunday in the season of Lent. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So what do you say when you want to greet people in Lent? It's kind of awkward to say, Happy Lent. (laughs) Have a good Lent. Well, we begin our season of Lent. As you know, we've started our classes. We had ashes on Ash Wednesday. Some of you may have seen in the paper and on the news, we did ashes to go. For those who were not able to make the evening service, they could drive by the church and get ashes. Our first class of our Lenten series began on Thursday, and we will repeat that class Uh, after worship and after the Cuban sandwich fundraiser. So have a sandwich and then pop back up and we'll start to class again on Sunday. But now we begin this season of Lent. To know the dark, the poet Wendell Berry says, go dark, and we will. For these six weeks of Lent, from today through Palm Sunday, we are going to explore darkness, specifically how God uses darkness, what we can learn from Scripture of darkness, and what we can learn of darkness itself. As we begin the journey of darkness, it may seem an odd theme for us. We may ask, are we a bit afraid of the dark? Maybe rightly so, if you've ever walked through the dark and banged your shin because you couldn't see or missed a step. We have reason to be anxious in darkness. Maybe we've lost our childhood fear of darkness. We no longer run up the stairs from the basement after the lights are off, our imaginations conjuring up all sorts of scary things that are rushing up the stairs behind us, ready to grab us. I don't know, looking at some of you, maybe some of you still do run up the stairs from the basement, a little bit unsure about that. But we know there are other kinds of darkness than the mere absence of light. So for this season of Lent, we will explore themes of darkness in Scripture to learn what darkness has to reveal to us. We begin in the beginning, in Genesis, with the first mention of darkness and light. In the reading from Genesis, we have both darkness and light, and nowhere... Does God call the darkness 
bad or evil. God separates the darkness from the light, gives the sun to rule today and the night to rule, or the moon to rule tonight. Night and day are their own realms, and both are necessary for life. We work while the sun shines, or as we would say out in rural Kansas, make hay while the sun shines. And at night, we rest. In the quiet of the evening, with the work of the day done, we are free to reflect, to consider, to ponder. In the morning, while the sun is dawning, we have a few moments to receive the new day. To take a moment before our feet hit the floor to give thanks for this unwritten page of life and to imagine how we will live it. There may be things we think we absolutely have to do, but for that first moment we are free to imagine what we want to do. For each day is a first day of creation, and all of us are co-creators with God. In the night, between the evening and the morning, we dream. One doesn't have to read very far in the scriptures where one reads of God appearing to someone in a dream. Jacob's dream of the ladder with the angels ascending and descending, the angel appearing to Joseph and Mary, telling him not to be afraid. Much happens in dreams. And in the Gospel according to St. Mark, before Jesus begins his work, his ministry of proclaiming and incarnating God's good news, he is driven into the darkness of the wilderness. The wilderness is not just physically dark, It's a place where he is alone with his thoughts and the demons, the thoughts that come unbidden. All the fears about what God is choosing him to do, all the doubts he might have about whether he can do what God asks, all the temptations to misuse the gifts that God is giving him, all of that is in the desert. And in the desert, there's no one to give him answers. In the darkness of the wilderness, Jesus must wrestle with his own soul. He cannot begin the work God has given him until he faces his own doubts and fears. We may think Jesus begins his ministry when he appears in the village and begins healing and teaching, but Jesus' work begins in the darkness. Forty days of centering, of stealing his resolve, preparing his soul for what he is called to do. In the Jewish tradition, the day begins not with the morning, but with the night. The first thing we are to do is rest. Rest, but also trust. Begin our day trusting that the universe can work without us scurrying about and being busy with it. Trust God. Go to sleep. When you wake up, God will be there. The universe will have turned. Things will work. Step into God's new day. How interesting if we, Christians, could reverse our timeline and start our day by stopping and trusting that God is here. Darkness is its own realm. Darkness has its own secrets to reveal. Darkness invites and compels us to use our other senses, not just sight. In the day, we depend so much on what our eyes can see, but in the dark, we sense and smell, hear and touch. And, you know, there are things we can say only in the dark because they're too hard to say face-to-face in the light. Darkness is necessary. Seeds germinate in the dark, pushing their roots into the soil before sprouting and opening to the sun. And Jesus used his 40 days of darkness in the wilderness to stretch the roots of his soul. And so as we begin this season of Lent and this time of listening for what the dark may teach us, I invite us to use these 40 days 
like Jesus, to stretch the roots of our souls. Take these days to learn what can only be sensed and explored in the dark. So here's your assignment. I realize a lot of you are educators, and I'm beginning to pick up some of your language. There'll be a pop quiz on Thursday. (laughs) To begin, try this for this week. Just this. And fortunately, daylight savings is working for us because now it's darker uh, in the morning than it was. Wait longer to turn on the lights in your home in the morning. Just wait. Let the day come to you in sounds and smells before you open your eyes. Before you open your eyes, open your senses to what else God is showing you in the day. And then in the evening, wait to turn on the lights. Pause for a moment to explore the gradual change of day to night. The quiet settling of the sun, the twilight time. Let your senses, your souls adjust to the darkness so you can feel and know the subtle thoughts and ideas or as Wendell Berry might say, the shy creatures who only come out at night. To know the dark, go dark. Since God has made us the blessed community, the church, let us greet one another with the peace and joy of Christ. Peace and joy be with you.
Kiss. In this season of Lent, may our thoughts turn especially to those who are in darkness, not of their own making, but darkness that comes from illness, from poverty, from oppression, from exile, from hunger. And be mindful that we who have much can share much. So in this season, let us with generosity and compassion bring our tithes and our offerings.
long as the new day will come and let there be brightness let me always feel the sun and let me be lonely but let me keep your love let me feel sorrow Let us pray together. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for the service and joy of your blessed realm. Amen. You may be seated. As we come to this time of baptism, I invite all children, anyone middle schoolish age and younger, to come up for a minute. I need your help. I see a couple of children. Come on up. Come on. You help me fill the font. Get it ready. You're going to need your hands. There you go. Okay. 
What do you think? Is that warm enough for a baby? Go pretty good? Okay. go just put them all in there and we'll keep going until we get it nice and full no go ahead pour it in go ahead pour it in there you go okay a couple more great what do you think one more get them nice and wet what do you think Okay, there we go. That should do it. Great. Thank you. What are your names? Hi. Okay. Well, thank you for helping out. All right. All right. Will those who are having their child baptized please come? And also the godparents, the sponsors, come on up. If you'll stand right by the font here. Oh, you could have helped too. We could have put you in there. Why don't you stand next to your friends there? There we go. And uh, we need an attending elder. There he is. Did you prepare me for that? <laughs> <laughs> Babies bring surprises, don't they? <laughs> Hear the words of Jesus. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. Hear also these words from Holy Scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and creator of us all, who is above all and through all and in all. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. We are all one in Christ. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. In order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called you out of darkness into God's marvelous light. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. Let me get a microphone for you. On behalf of the session, I present Lincoln, son of Kurt and Alicia Bowman, to receive the sacrament of baptism. Do you desire that Lincoln be baptized? If so, answer, we do. Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to your son? If so, say, we do. And Aaron and Taylor, do you promise through prayer and example to support and encourage Lincoln to be a faithful Christian? If so, say, we do. Do you members of the Church of Jesus Christ promise to guide and nurture Lincoln by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging him to know and follow Christ, and to be a faithful member of Christ's Church, say we do? We do. Through baptism, we enter the covenant God has established. Within this covenant, God gives us new life, guards us from evil, and nurtures us in love. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, let us confess our faith. You'll find the ecumenical apostles creed in your hymnal I believe in God the, the Father, Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ God's only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. And in it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you for the water of baptism in it we are buried with Christ, by it we share in his resurrection, through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Creator and of the Christ and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born anew may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor, now and forever. Amen. What name do you give your son? Lincoln Benjamin Bowman, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God. See what love God has for us, that we should be called the children of God, and so we are. You already have a very large family. I want you to meet the rest of your family. They're as nice as they look. Okay, in a couple of years, you'll be attending at the baptism for your cousins. What do you think? A few years will make you a liturgist. Come on. <laughs> All right. You ready to go back? Through this baptism, Lincoln has been received into the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. As a member of the household of God, God has called him to serve Christ in the wor world. Let us welcome him to this ministry. With joy and thanksgiving, thanksgiving we, wel we welcome you into Christ's church, for we are all one in Christ. We promise to love, encourage, and support you, to share the good news of the gospel with you, and to help you know and follow Christ. On behalf of your fellow saints, we welcome you. Glad to have you. Good to be here. Aaron? No, no Taylor. Aaron. There we go. All right. One of the favorite sacraments of the church. Glad to have you. Let us pray. Holy God, you have promised to hear us when we pray in the name of your Son. Therefore, in confidence and trust, we offer our prayers. Enliven the church for its mission, that we may be salt of the earth and light to the world. Breathe fresh life into your people. We pray especially for our sister churches in Racine, the churches in our presbytery, and our partner church Central Presbyterian in Cuba. Lead us and every people into ways of justice and peace, that we may respect one another in freedom and in truth. Awaken in us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it, 
and teach us to care wisely for its resources. Inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others, that all in positions of power and influence may act with integrity and courage. God of hope, comfort, and restore all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We pray today for Annette Anderson, Peggy Taylor, Nancy Ritter, Bill and Lissy Blanford, Ed Hunt, Daryl Sutton, Nancy Tobias, David and Kathy Perkins, Larry and Ellen Cardwell, Mary Jane Johnston, Peggy Wagner, and Diane Lehman. And for friends and relatives of our members, Anita, Sean, Mary, Sandy, Jillian, Christy, Autumn, Ben, Lucille, and Jerry, may they know the power of your healing love. We pray also for those serving in the armed forces, for Kyle Sondergaard, Jay Brooke, Chad Lawrence, Jordan Smith, Mary Workman, and for all police, fire, and emergency medical personnel. Hear our prayers now for our own concerns, which we offer in silence. Hear us now as we pray, as you have taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory ever and ever. Amen. We come to the close of our worship with this communion or this baptism hymn, Child of Blessing, Child of Promise. Let us stand and sing. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way and keep your whole being, spirit, soul, and body free from every fault at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
will just be seated for just a moment. Those of you who are visitors, if you'll indulge us, we are Presbyterians, and therefore it means we meet. So I will invite the, uh, Linda to come forward, and we are going to elect our nominating committee, who in turn will then be talking to some of you about serving on our boards of elders and deacons. So if you'll place those names before us. The following people have agreed to serve on the nominations for Deacons and Elders Committee. They are Lissy Blanford, Elder, Georgia Hall, Elder, Elaine Jacobson, Congregation, Denise Park, Deacon, Linda Schubert, Elder, Jen Severson, con Congregation. Go stand if you're available, if you're here, here we are. A little background information, a nominating committee has to have a couple of elders, a couple of deacons, and members of the congregation. These are the ones uh, placed before you, and I need, uh, since you placed them before, we have a motion that doesn't require a second. Are there any nominations from the floor for the nominating committee? Hearing none, all in favor, aye. aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries. You may be seated. We'll have a prayer, and we're ready for our postlude, and then we will all go to the Cuban fundraiser. Yes? Okay. <laughs> Let's pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for all occasions when we may gather in your name. We especially thank you for those who have accepted your call for special forms of service. We ask your blessing on this nominating committee and also on this congregation that when the nominating committee comes to them, they will seriously consider if they are being called to a time of service. Bless this group. Bless this meeting. Now send us on your, our way in your name. It is in your name that we pray, amen. 